Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's been quite, quite a long time since we've been doing this. Uh, we finally got a chance to take the car over to a tuning shop and get an access port installed. So we're gonna be doing that today. Um, I know a while back I was like, I'm moving to Alaska, psych, bro. No, so uh, we're actually just moving up to St. Louis. It's about a 500 mile uh, car ride. So uh, one of the big things about this car is it's it's not tuned and that's a really really big issue for these cars i don't know how many times i've been talking to people and they're like oh dude your car is sweet what do you have on i was like oh just a, a down pipe and exhaust and uh, that's really about it um they're like look at me with this ghastly look like bro you need to go get an access port you need to get a tune i'm just like why it's not that big of a deal um, but after doing some research apparently it is a pretty big deal to run these cars uh, with just a down pipe I know I am losing some gas mileage. It does run pretty rough, and that's one of the big concerns. I'd really like for it to just run as smooth as possible, and I, I keep seeing these hilarious memes that are like, oh, bro, <laughs> you got a sweet WRX. What are you gonna do? Oh, nothing. I'm just gonna get tuned for reliability. You know what? I should probably get uh, some new wheels for some aesthetics. You know what? I should probably go a bigger engine. You know what? And it just keeps going and going and going, and I don't wanna go down that rabbit hole. That's why I was so, so reluctant to even do this access port and tune for the car because it just it just seems like a rabbit hole that seems unnecessary to go down actually just cheaper to get the car tuned than to put a stock down pipe on it because a stock down pipe is like thirty five hundred dollars an access port plus a tune plus just a tune up which is just going to be them going through the car making sure everything's good is only going to be about a thousand bucks but a downpipe is like $3,500 new and that's, you know, you can find a used one, but then you got to worry about, oh, well, is it, is it good? Is it bad? Did somebody beat on this? Like, is it sitting in a garage? Was it kept properly? Was it stored properly? You just, you just never know what you're going to get in that kind of bag of stuff. So it's going to be a big day. It's going to be a big day. Uh, we'll get some driving shots beforehand. We'll get some before and after thoughts and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. All right. So we are off on our way to the tuner shop some windows down hopefully that still works uh but so for starters i've had the car since about november and it's now almost august 1st so a little more than six months and i guess uh give you my six month review but so far the car has been great there's been zero issues um it's never left me stranded or anything like that but there are a few things that like could be better and I think that's gonna get changed today now that we're getting the access port installed. Um, when you're driving, it's almost like it doesn't grab. I think there is some something in the throttle where you have to be at at least like 10% throttle before anything will, like before the car will start moving. So it kind of feels like there's a little bit of dead space, which isn't awesome. And I don't know if you've ever, had the hill assist on in a Subaru, but it is so hit or miss that you don't know when it's gonna be on and when it's gonna be off, which is incredibly frustrating because it seems like the car could be dead flat and then it just, it'll still stick. So it feels like you have to like get it over like almost like a bump in the road before it'll finally get through whatever it's trying to do. But then other times it's, it's perfectly fine. You can be on what feels like like five degree incline and the car will be like, <laughs> the car will be rolling backwards and like, what hill is in hill, hill assist on? But apparently it's not. Uh, but driving daily is great. I, I love driving this car. Like ev every time I get to drive, it just feels super, super good. Um, I guess we're gonna go back and forth in the good and the bad. Um, for some reason, fifth and gear, sixth gear, I almost feel like are exactly the same. Like there's no difference between fifth gear and sixth gear sometimes. Maybe it's just because I'm not flat out when I'm going into sixth gear usually, but I just feel like you could be in fifth or sixth and you're going to accelerate exactly the same. Um, not only that, um, but I have had an issue with the car where it sounds like something's rattling when you're sitting at a stoplight and I don't, it's, it's only when the air conditioner is on too. And I've brought it to Subaru and I've brought it to this shop, um, that I'm bringing it to now, which is a very highly recommended shop, Misfire Motorsports. I think they were on the discovery channel for the street outlaws show. Um, 
and they have like a Hawkeye uh, WRX that I guess runs like seven seconds in the quarter mile. It's it's insane and it's awesome. Um, but I just felt awful because I, I brought it to these guys and I'm like, hey, I think there's something wrong with my air conditioner. When I turn it on, the car like rattles, but the air conditioner blows cold and like, oh, it might be the thing. And they were super cool and they, they didn't charge me to check it out because um, they put it on their machine. They tested it fine, but God, it was, it was just embarrassing because they're like, no, there's nothing wrong with the car. And, you know, then they're like, oh, well, if you didn't know, you also have some other upgraded parts to the car. I was like, oh, no, tell me more. Um, they're like, you have, you know, solid engine mounts, a solid transmission mount. Like, I think this was 100% somebody's, like, track toy. And then they, you know, took all the parts off and then, you know, sent it back to stock and sent it out the door or to a dealership and then i was dumb enough to buy it i got the car initially and i think i might have made a video about it i can't remember but or talks about it but i brought it to the local subaru dealership because i just needed an oil change i didn't i didn't have time i've just been very busy that's why you know i'm not making videos all the time just life gets life gets pretty busy um either way uh, I brought it to a local Subaru dealership, you know, I was like, hey, you know, let's do an oil change and uh, what's it called in an alignment. Cool. Got that all set up. No big deal. Couldn't do the alignment then. But, you know, but the guy's like, oh, did you just, you know, when did you get this car? I was like, oh, I got it in November. Like, I'm so cool. I drive an STI now. Um, got the car in November. Um, he's like, oh, that's that's crazy. What's the VIN number? He runs the VIN, and it turns out my car's had, like, a whole new, like, long block put in it uh, because I guess the previous one uh, had low compression, which is standard, uh, and about $10,000 worth of additional labor and parts put into it. And I was like, that's awesome. I'm so glad I got this car <laughs> after... Oh, Subarus are super reliable. People don't know what they're talking about and, you know, making fun of Donut Media. And here I am, unbeknownst to me, having a car that already has an engine in it. And, you know, you just feel ridiculous. You just, you got to look back and you just got to eat the crow, as they say. Um, but, you know, now I have a, you know, car with essentially an engine with 10,000 miles on it, which is cool because I still love the car. There's, you couldn't convince me to buy another car even if I totaled this car right now. I would definitely 100% look for another STI. Maybe this time in white. I think that'd be cool. Uh, I just really like the white. I know the, the guys on Gears and Gasoline have like a 500 horsepower white STI and it looks awesome. Um, but mine kind of looks like the Mighty Car Mods, LeVorg and Super Gramps and I'm, I really, you know, Marty and Moog, man, I would do horrible things to be on your show, but that's a different story. Honestly, there's not much I would change about this car other than maybe it's stock, maybe the color. There's always little nitpicky things, but drivability, it's it's great. I mean, it is, it's not bad on gas for all intents and purposes. The, I think the tank is quite small. Um, I think it's only like a, I usually only put about 12 to 13 gallons in it and it's, it's full. Um, in Oklahoma, we only get 91, which is fine. I mean, it's it's a daily driver. I'm not here driving on like 93 or the Sunco like 103 octane. Like that's not what the car's for. I think it might hurt it. It's like I just I really wanted like an OEM plus type of car, and I think that's kind of like what I'm gonna pursue. So I really don't know how much more mods or videos I can really do about this car. It's been it's been wonderful. It's been great. I think. I'm going to need brake pads here soon. I was going to do brakes and rotors, but, or pads and rotors, but it's, it's just an absurd cost. And I think the, the rotors are fine. Like, I think I'm just being super over dramatic. That's really what it comes down to. It's just what I want and what the car, what I think the car needs. And, you know, those two are just kind of very different things. Uh, you really just kind of, kind of got to roll with the punches and deal with it as it comes. But other than that, like, it's been a great daily driver, and there's no arguing that this is a great car. Um, I did get to experience a, a Focus RX, RS uh, recently. Um, it does have better seats, and I think about that every time I get into my car now because of how much the Focus RS, the stock seats, they, they hug you. It's like almost like you're sitting in a baseball glove, and you're just like not going anywhere where 
the STI, the seats feel really, really good, but it's just, since you've had like even better, you come back and you're like, oh, like I'm all over the place in these, whereas those you're like, you are in it, you are, you are here. And this just feels more, I think there's more response from the road, more of that raw driving experience. Um, I just love it. I, I mean, I absolutely love this car. I love the wing on the back. You can kind of see it right here in the background. I love how obnoxious it is. Uh, I love that I can't take it through uh, car washes without being like, hey, turn off the, the spinny thing that goes over the top of the car because I don't want it to mess up the wing. Because I looked at the Chemical Guys stuff. I bought some of their stuff. I bought some Meguiar stuff or Greedo, Greedos. That's what it was. I bought some more of their stuff to wash the car with. And that's all great. But then, you know, in Oklahoma, if you use water, period, your bill just goes through the roof and not have to explain like why it's more expensive to wash my car at home than it is to just bring it somewhere, either get it detailed or just run it through a car wash. It's just it's like a dollar fifty there or like three hundred dollars at the end of the month to wash your car, which is just there's no winning sometimes. There's just no winning. The other thing I just love about this car is just when it's sitting, like I don't get to see it much driving much because, you know, my spouse can't drive stick shift well. So I she never drives this car. So I never get to see it driving. But I like to let other people drive. I'm like, hey, you guys want to drive the car just so I can like, you know, kind of third party experience it and like see somebody enjoy this car as much as I do because, you know, it's not that often people get to drive it. I'm like, drive it. It's fucking sick. It's awesome. Like it sounds loud. It's obnoxious. Like, I don't know what else you want because you don't Oh, I always get into this argument with people and they're like, well, why would you want a Porsche 911 in automatic? I'm, or like, why wouldn't you want it in automatic? I'm, so I'm like, why would you? What is the point of that car? Like, I I get it. It's a nice car. Not everybody's here for the, the driving experience or, you know, the the fastness and the quickness and the response. But why why wouldn't you want it with that? Like, that's the best part of the car. Like, that's doing this and this and you know and <laughs> and running the car up and through its gears you know when you have an opportunity to is it's the best part about driving it is it is a manual it is a you know a stick shift like if you drive a car and it's an automatic like okay that's great i'm not gonna like dog you too much about it but it's just when you get into the realm of like yo i got this wrx sti but it's automatic i'm like i didn't even know that was a thing why would you do that like that doesn't make sense to me it's like, oh, I spent $250,000 on this race-specific car, the competition edition, and it's automatic. I'm like, still doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why Why are we Why are we letting manufacturers do that? Is there more of a market for people who are like, yes, I just want it because it's automatic, or do they just want it because they have money and they want to show it off and they don't care about the driving experience? And I think those are two very polarizing things. You know, we're almost to uh, the shop now. So uh, long story short... Uh, I just really, I don't really care about power. Like, I think it's fine. I think more than this is going to be more of a, every day I'm going to have to constantly remind myself not to drive the car fast, not to beat on it, not to, you know, accidentally be doing 90 in a school zone type of thing. Um, so I just really want it to idle better. I just want it to be safe, reliable. Let's go down that road, you know. I want a safe, reliable Subaru WRX. So if you see me uh, crying in about, I don't know, two or three hours, well, you know, it didn't make it which is going to be absolutely brutal for me. But, you know, hopefully afterwards the car just idles a little bit better. It's a little rough. Um, I think, you know, after the tune, they're going to look at the fuel chart. They're like, yeah, the car is looking at the downpipe. And it's like, well, it's supposed to be catted, but it's not. Um, and hopefully I get a cool cop sticker after everything. Because I already put a Misfire Motorsports sticker on there because... They're cool dudes. They got a great shop. It's a great atmosphere. You know, that they do quality work on Subaru. So if you're ever in the Oklahoma City area, like it's not sponsored. So but if you ever just, you know, need a good Subaru shop, like I highly, highly recommend them. So all right. Uh we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the disguised horse. It's been quite a while. I think I even grew like a really lame mustache but glad to be back so much has happened since we got the cartoon it's crazy um it's been almost three months since i i 
made the last, you know, what seems like seconds to you was months for me, but um, I wanted to give the car enough time to learn, learn the new tune, learn everything about how it drives, get to know more about the car now that it's, I feel like it's a whole different animal now, and then kind of report back, because honestly there was a long time where I wasn't able to make content just because life, you know, had a lot going on at a lot, and I just really wanted to give you guys the best review ever because, you know, sometimes you see channels where they're like, I just got it off the dyno, it's amazing, and it's like, is it? I don't believe you, tell me more. But with this car, it, it is amazing. The guys at Misfire Motorsports uh, made sure the car was good to go to get on the dyno, and then BW Tuning, uh, their tuning partner, uh, shout out to Ben and Ryan. Um, those guys just absolutely killed it. I couldn't say anything else about how great they are. I highly recommend all of them if you're in the Oklahoma area. Um, but the car just drives great. It idles better. It runs better. Um, I upgraded to Motul 5W40 oil. Um, I think the car is a lot, I want to say quieter. I think there's a lot of engine noise rattling. Um, with the 5W30 oil, I was using Penzoil oil because I had the great idea of, you know, it's available because, you know, Motul, you got to go through a distributor like Misfire Motorsports uh, to get it ordered to your, uh, yourself. You can go on eBay or um, Amazon and things like that, but just not really what I wanted to do. Um, but I think I absolutely lucked out, uh, you know, living in Oklahoma and, you know, meeting the guys at Misfire and and uh, BW Tuning. And, you know, I think, honestly, I can't say uh, how lucky I am to, you know, have those guys help me out and get this car sorted because it's got a storied past, which I'll, I'll talk more about in another video. And these aren't things you learn until you've had the car for a little while. You bring it to a car show, you bring it to your local Subaru dealership just to have it looked at. But this car is amazing. It is a wonderful daily driver. I can't recommend these cars enough. Um, instead of going with an access port, I ended up going uh, with the ECU Tech uh, Tune uh, through BW Tuning, and it's just been it's been great. I, I saved a little bit of money on it. Um, the access ports are like six hundred, seven hundred dollars, you know, plus dyno time, and it, you know, it comes out to be a lot, uh, but. I told the guys at Misfire what I was going for, and you know they recommend I go uh, another route. And honestly, I couldn't be happier. It's uh, it's perfect. It's what I need. I don't need a little like I know they're they're great products, but like I don't need something right here telling me like you have a knock. You like I, stuff I don't understand because I'm not deep in the weeds of of tuning. I just you know I, I am reaping the benefits essentially. Um, but you know, down the line, I did buy a, a ECU Tech uh, Connect kit so I can get updated maps from uh, BW Tuning whenever I need. Uh, well, at a price, but you know, if I need one, I can get one. But with that, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Tons of more content to come. I can't wait to make more, and I can't wait to show it to you. Peace. Mm -hmm.